Okay, guys, uh, welcome to the FX Street webinar. Uh, my name's Ian Coleman. I'm going to be your host for the next 45 50 minutes. Um, I'm one of the traders and analysts at uh, First of Trading. Okay, we supply uh, banks, uh, uh, foreign exchange brokers, um, hedge funds. Um, with trade recommendations and uh, technical analysis. Okay, um, all of our calls are produced by 7 a.m. UK time and uh, are run until uh, 4 p.m. Um, today we're going to talk. Of the reason why I'm doing this seminar to or this webinar today is that um, we were talking uh, last week, or we were hosting the one of the webinars last week, and one of the uh, guys that was in there. Said to me, "Can you really make money at um, at scalping?" Okay, um, and I said, "Yes," uh, was my immediate answer. Um, and it all depends. <laughs> Trading is all about risk reward. Okay, so we can have a medium term forecast. So a lot of the time, we talk about, or I talk about, um, time frames. Okay, so we do a webinar called Time Frame Breakdowns, where we'll um, We'll look at monthly, weekly, daily, four hourly, hourly charts, etc. Okay. Um, and what might be bullish in a weekly time frame may be bearish in an hourly time frame. Okay. So just because somebody says, oh, I'm bullish on, on dollar yen, unless you actually know what time frame they're looking at, you know, everybody can be right because they're looking for different targets, they're looking for different levels. Um, they've got the stop in a different place, etc., etc. Okay, so I always say to guys, you know, my, my medium term forecast is for higher levels. My medium term forecast at the moment in dollar yen is actually for lower levels. Okay, so my medium term forecast is for lower levels, but intraday we could get a pullback. So, in a lot of the reports that we post, um, even though the calls are produced and go out at seven o'clock. Sometimes it'll be yes, sell, sell at seven o'clock open because risk reward's good. Here's our profit target. Uh, here's our our our, um, our stop. A prime example this morning was Aussie dollar. Okay, so we bought Aussie dollar from the open because the risk reward ratio up until our target level was quite quite good. Okay, um, it has to be in excess of one to one, but I'm, I, I'm not expecting a massive rally in Aussie dollar. So again, it's just it's looking at your risk reward, looking at your time frames, and whether or not it's beneficial um, to uh, to pull the trigger um, at that level. So basically, what what I have a tendency to do with my scalp trades is that I look for um, support and resistance. I have certain indicators that I overlay on my charts that. Um, that I use for support and resistance. I use FIB extension levels, really retracement levels. Uh, um, I use um, candlestick patterns to give me a bias. Okay, and then I use all this information to give me a trade or a level where I can look for a scalp. Now the reason why I was just flicking through before. Um, all the different currency pairs. Okay, and he, yeah, this is a prime example. Okay, this is this is my Euro Dollar Weekly. Okay, I haven't just got a chart on. I've got a weekly, daily. I've even got six hours here. I don't really look to six hours. Okay, and then I, I have a tendency to click through all the time frames and have a look for relevant support and resistance levels. And basically, that's what I was doing before um, before you you guys or before the start of this webinar. Because I'm obviously we're trying to produce, or I'm trying to produce, some uh, some live trades in the next uh, next 40 45 minutes. So I'm just going through again. One we're going to see. I haven't got any at the moment. So one that we're going to I can I can talk about is basically the uh, the dolly uh, dolly yen trade from this morning. Okay, um, and we can prove that we took it. There's three dollar yen trades here, okay. All shorts around 93.62. So, um, so dollar yen. Uh, 
I'm going to show you how to just use it with, with price action. I don't know what I've done there. Okay. And a few indicators. Okay. What we said was on the uh, on the note was that we're just going to look at a few indicators. But first of all, I wanted to explain how I get how I get my bias. Okay. So I take you to, to four hours. We took this long trade up uh, last week, Friday. Uh, and now we're looking for short trades back down again. And basically, the reason for this is that we've got this head and shoulders formation okay, that, that looks like it's in play. Okay, so bias is to the downside um, with, um, with an eventual break of this, this channel base. Okay, and then obviously to get our medium term target remember we're talking about scalping down to medium term we're looking at around 90 the figure now one of the reasons why we're bearish around here not just because of this uh, potential head and shoulders but also if we go to big time frames let me just clear off all this information let's go to the monthlies monthlies they say this man mad and we go to a retracement level. Okay. We're just 94.13 is what it normally comes out as, okay? But 94.17 is 38.2% of this move lower. Okay, so it's a prime fib level. So we've got a prime fib level, we've got a previous high coming in on the monthlies here, okay? And then price action, when we break it down into dailies and weeklies, okay, you can see spikes up towards 94.15, which is showing rejection. You can see price action back around here, okay, and then dailies, okay, chop chop on the dailies, which has given us that head and shoulders formation, okay, moving down towards the baseline. We've got bullish and golf in there, but two candlestick formations, I'm sure most of you have been here before, but two candlestick formations that we want to look at inside candles which basically tell us that there's indecision, outside candles which tell us that there's indecision has been resolved really. Um, but obviously engulfing candles work better at highs and lows. Okay, In the middle of a trend or on a pullback they can just be a part of the correction higher. Okay, We did have one more day of, uh, of positive price action. So that's basically how we're looking to the long term view and then obviously um, news this morning GM Trader that um, I am 95% technical okay but I have uh, talking forex on in the background because um, I like to hear the news I like to understand what's going on especially overnight I mean I start writing my reports at half past four in the morning so um, it's not only a bit of noise for me um, but also I have Bloomberg on and it's nice to, 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 to have reasons why things are moving and obviously you've had the uh, the new uh, what, what they expect to be the new finance minister of uh, of Japan coming in saying he's not going to buy uh, uh, overseas bonds so that was uh, one of the reasons why sort of dollar yen uh, just ticked off a little bit overnight obviously the reason to go back to fundamentals again the reason why it moved up on um, on Friday was because of the G20 meeting and they were saying that they're not really, nobody was really pressurising uh, Japan not to manipulate their currency. So that was the reason why it came up and obviously this was the reason why it came down. I don't really care for fundamentals. Uh, I've watched the market far too much and um, and a lot of the time you'll get, I used to try and trade the news and this is a long time ago now, uh, but what would happen is Obviously, so it would come out, it would get squawked. I would jump in, buy it, think, yeah, we're going to get a good run up on there. It would, it would run up, but um, only, only a little bit because the, the bank traders have got the squawk before you, uh, were quicker than you, um, and it ended up just reversing. So um, I'm not a big one for news. But anyway, going back. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, the stop on the medium term trade, okay, we, we, called a, we called a sell trade from the open yesterday, which is about 7 o'clock. 
So we sold Dolly in on the open here at uh, 93.91 and we actually had a stop at 94.48. So about a 50 pip stop on a medium term trade okay, with a target level of 90. So um, about 8 to 1 on, um, on that one. But the one this morning, okay, so I'm not going to tell you, let's make this perfectly clear from, from the outset, I'm not going to tell you my proprietary, what I call the, my proprietary indicators or the indicators that we use to produce our support and resistance levels and our triggers. Um, that's why I've got a vanilla chart on at the moment. What I will show you is basically how I produce my personal um, trades um, from these levels. Okay. Um, Basically, all the levels are posted on our website. So, so anyway, ninety, I'm going to say 93.62 was the resistance level that we had this morning. Um, so I'm just going to stick that a horizontal line. So basically, what I do is, um, is on all my charts, I put horizontal lines and, and alarms. So I'm looking at. 15 currency pairs. So one of the first things I do in the morning is horizontal lines on all my support resistance levels. Okay, that I can see for uh, that particular currency pair. Um, not, I'm not putting a, a, a an alarm on sank at 95. The figure, you know, it's got to be within sort of 30, 40 ticks. Um, otherwise, I, I can watch it live really. Um, so I put horizontal lines on. I've got my alarms on. And then I, w I, w I want to get down into short time frames, and this is obviously what we're talking about today. So I use two indicators, scalping indicators. Um, so we're going to insert a study. The first one is an RSI. Okay. As we all know, the RSI stands for Relative Strength Index. It is an overbought, oversold indicator. Okay. Um, what I'd like to see in RSI is what I put on in RSI is the 50 line a lot of the time. Okay, because the 50 line gives me a bias in a higher time frame. So basically, by that I mean if I'm below 50, then I really should be looking for sell triggers in shorter time frames. Okay, so if I'm below 50 in the hourly, I should be looking for sell triggers in five minutes, ten minutes, three minutes, etc. Uh, if I'm below 50 on the daily, then I should be looking for sell triggers in hourly, four hourly. And the reason by that is because I'm always trying to trade with the trend. And most of the time, if it's that way around, then the trend is still to the downside. Okay, so if I'm below 50, the trend is still to the downside. So I should be looking for the scalps in that direction. Um, and a lot of the time, especially when I was new to trading, I used to use fib levels. I'm fanatical about fibs anyway, but I used to put fib levels on it, absolutely everything. Um, and I used to think, well, this is still going up, this is still going up, this is still going up. And then it will get to 261.8%, and I'll go, right, it's going down now. So I'm now looking for sell signals in short time frames. And what used to happen was I used to execute the sell, sell signals, and it used to go and just take out 261.8 and keep rallying, 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 rallying. Um, and it's because, most of the time, it was because there was a higher move in a, in a different time frame. So what you're better off doing is just trying to get a bias off one time frame and then trade the shorter time frame okay, to, to get your entry level. Um, I also don't believe that people can trade part-time, I should put that one in as well. Um, the markets are constantly evolving. Um, I don't think you can put trades or triggers on in the morning, walk out, come back and, and you've made money. I, I might be wrong. but Okay, so this is our, our trigger level. We've got our RSI on, okay. Uh, the RSI is actually a 15 setting, which, uh, which I use, not 16. Um, and then we put one other indicator on. So right click. It's a study. Bollinger Bands. Okay. We've got to understand what Bollinger Bands are. Okay, I've, I've not got Parabolic Zara on here. I haven't got trend lines. Um, I'm basically looking for, for a bias. Okay. What, um, what Bollinger Band basically does is 
if the market's non-trending, then, then the bands will, will, will close up. Um, and they will they will get squeezed, okay? Then the market will have a tendency to have an impulsive move, okay? And the band widened. Now, the market always, do, the, both, the, the indicator always, also dictates that when the market goes outside of the Bollinger Bands, as we have here, okay, then it has a tendency to move back in, okay, so it'll be overbought and it'll, it'll move back in. You should know that we weren't overbought here, okay. So this obviously happens in all different time frames, um, from monthlies, weeklies, etc., etc. If a market moves qu too quickly, it goes outside the bands, it has, it has a tendency to go in. The RSI. We've got overbought, oversold as well. <coughs> okay, so it's it's like it, it, it's a it's a double whammy effect, if you like. I'm looking for two indicators that both confirm the same thing. Okay, if I don't get the two indicators confirming the same thing, then I want to see price action. Do you remember we turned around and we said that we're looking for engulfing or inside candles, and that's that's basically that's basically the scout technique. So then I take it all the way down into three minutes. So I've got I've got my support and resistance levels. Let's just see what time we took this. 11:48. Okay. So well that's not UK time, is it? Because it was here. Must be 9:48. Okay, so basically, what we're looking for, we're looking for moves. Okay, not worried about wave patterns in short time frames. Okay, we're looking for moves back up to resistance levels. Okay, so this is our resistance level. Then basically, what we want to see is one of two things. Okay, and you can notice if you go back to that Alpari account. But we didn't just take one trade, okay, we took a total of three trades here. Um, because the best trade isn't always the first trade, is what I will say, especially when you're scalping, okay? So what I want to see, I want to see a move outside the Bollinger Band in three minutes. I want to see my RSI being overbought. Now those are two uh, conditions, okay? If it's not overbought, if it's not outside the Bollinger Band, then I have to have an engulfing candle, okay? So by an engulfing candle, I mean a candle that completely takes out the whole range of the previous candle. I don't think we've got many about here. There's an engulfing candle there, okay? But it need to be, it need to be at the top of the range, and it now have to be at my resistance level. Okay, so here we spike out, we form an inside candle. So I've got two out of three conditions here. So I've got overbought, a spike out, and an inside bar. Okay, at that point I pull the trigger. Okay, I think, what are we getting at? Uh, 61. Okay, so that's it. Getting all sorts coming up here. Okay, so 61, we managed to get our, our sell trade. What will happen a fair bit is that the market will come and just retest that resistance level. Okay, so if we've missed it or if we're not quite sure, then we can actually set, set, set a trigger to sell at our resistance level. Okay, what will then happen more, more often than not, as you can probably see by our PL account. Um, is that the market will push to the downside. Now, this is where we need money, money management, okay? If you trade in one unit, then you've only got one unit to take off, okay? If you trade in two units, then you can manage your trade a lot better, okay? We actually just traded in the first, in one unit. And the reason why we traded in one unit, okay, was because the signal wasn't strong, okay? I didn't have an engulfing. I had two out of three. Um, so, it pushed lower. We then we then cashed in. Okay, it was a, a short scalp. I think about six six pips. Um, we also 
had uh, the Zeus survey come out at exactly 10 o'clock. So we don't want to be holding uh, figures or scout traits over, um, over, over uh, releases, okay, fundamental releases. So we came out here. Now, it pushed us higher after the Zoo, but it, it doesn't, even though it, it pushes on, it closes above the resistance level. We get another inside bar. We don't just get an inside bar, but this is the other trigger, okay, is that we've got divergence. So we've got a resistance level that's holding. We've got an inside bar, but note that we're, we're not outside the Bollinger Bands now, okay. So this is our, our secondary trigger, if you like, okay. So inside bar, those, and then we sold it here um, to the move back down. I think we cashed in around 51. We got a 52, for the last one. Okay. So you can basically, from 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 a scalping, what what are you missing? You're missing about 22 minutes. <laughs> I don't think I can go with it. I don't know if it's been recorded. Um, you have to ask Vicky, but it's, it's not fair to all the other participants that, that we go back over over old ground, I'm afraid. Um, so, it's about overbought, oversold, it's about Bollinger Band, it's about price action. Yeah, inside bars are outside bars. It's also, obviously, about having a, uh, a decent uh, support resistance level. Somebody asked earlier, I think it was Jim, um, where did you put the stop? Now, my stops, and I got this off, this isn't something that I've invented, um, but I was constantly, I was always, a long time ago now as well, I was looking at support and resistance levels, I was getting price action, I was going in, um, seeing it go on side slightly, putting it in my stop, and then getting taken out. And I was thinking, oh Jesus, I've been taken out again, and now the market's gone, gone my way, and it happened again and again and again and again. So what I have a tendency to do is the the trigger candle, okay, which in this case is this candle here, okay, the, um, the 939 candle. I take the whole candle and I add it to the top of the candle. So again, going back to it, this, I think the stop was about 75. The stop loss was at 75, which is up here, which is basically, okay, that candle added onto the top of that candle, okay. Um, and basically what I want to be doing, especially if I'm trading in two units, I want to be taking that length and taking one unit off at that length, okay. Um, let's have a quick flick through. So any, any questions about, about, about that technique? Okay, it's not rocket science. Um, you all have a tendency to see it happen a lot. So here, spike up, okay, it's an inside bar. That's only that's a false signal for me. It's not, there's not enough there. Um, plus, it's not a, a support resistance level. Okay, so I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have and didn't sell uh, that trigger. Plus, I don't start uh, trading until after our signals have been put out. But you can see here, okay, and again, it's got to be. At a, at a level that that you have decided is support resistance. So here, inside bar, okay, divergence, and then obviously the market, the market pushes higher. Um, what a lot of people look at doing is tightening up or taking one unit off uh, when they get indecision or a reversal candle in the other direction um, and then pulling in the stop to entry so you would have, you would have kept the trade there on your second unit one unit off here and then obviously bleed to the upside um, wasn't the case for us because we were looking to go short because of our medium term analysis okay because obviously wanting to trade with with the trend not counter trend um, 
let's have a quick flip through see if I can see anything on my charts don't want me to take another trade okay, let's just have a look at this 154.90 I didn't get this okay, just in cable it was a 154.90 resistance level for us we actually had 154.10 uh, in our reports this morning let's go back see if it works uh, yeah, so this is the I do think we're getting towards the, the base of this as well so we were looking to sell into rallies this morning um, and that's one of the reasons why we've got 10 as the trigger level uh, not, uh, not lower down ok Taking it back to three minutes. And this wouldn't have been this wouldn't have been for me either. But you can see here, okay, inside bar, outside uh, the Bollinger band with divergence and then the markets move lower. Um, again it's not outside, it's not overbought. It's uh, again. It's not. Uh, it's not one for me. Let me have a flick through again. See if we can find anything at all. Dollar Swiss is actually at one of my resistance levels as we speak. So what I have a tendency to do is obviously scalp in in, uh, in two trades or two units, I should say, and then if I can. I look at um, I look at leaving one on only if it's in the direction that I like or I analyse to be the trend. Bad signal um, at 78.6. We've got an engulfing candle. It's at the top of the back bands, but it's not outside and it's not overbought. So remember when I said there was two conditions. One, the first condition is that it's outside the band and overbought, and then you can trade on an inside candle. If those conditions aren't met, but you have an outside candle at your area of uh, of support or resistance, then you can you can execute the trade then. Uh, obviously with a stop up here so this is an outside bar okay um, at 78.6% retracement again I wouldn't be holding it because that initial push down is does not look impulsive enough to me so even if I did get in I would have been out by now um, so look dollar yen no there's a support level in dollar cad coming in at 101 11, probably not going to get there, but I'll put an alarm on that just in case. We'll see if we can get a scalp off that. Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar, our target level, we bought the 7 a.m. open this morning, which I think was around 28, and the target level is 50. So again, that one's nearly come to fruition and I can't really see anything happening there Euro sterling we went short took profit already at, C at uh, 04 and again I can't see any benefit of trading there and this is one of the reasons why I look uh, to so many different um, time frames um, because not time frames to, to different currency pairs because if you don't, then you're restricting, or I'm restricting myself, on the amount of uh, potential triggers I can get. Okay, Euro Swiss, quite Euro, like Euro Swiss at the moment, to be honest. Um, sterling Swiss, nothing. 
Then this risk gone absolutely nowhere for four days. Um, again, very hard to produce signals when there's nothing going on. Um, you know, the yen pairs look good this morning. Sterling yen's probably going to break the base. Okay, there was a, was a support coming in here. Low, 96.62. Then let's have a look, 96.62, what was the yen? I think we're going to have to hopefully get the same count of that cab and the alarm will pop up. If it's there. Sixty-two was the support, and again, it's, they're not very good signals. This was a decent signal okay, of sixty-two. So basically, what I'm doing after I've not finished my day job because we're monitoring all the all the trades that we've recommended in the morning, I'm basically constantly flicking flicking through all these different currency pairs and watching price action at where. Um, our system tells us that it's support and resistance. Okay, I don't use pivots. I have tendency not to use trend lines as well. Um, and then, like I said, the the trigger is an engulfing candle if we're not oversold or oversold outside Bollinger's. Okay, because um, then at least we've got a chance of getting a retracement. Okay. So look at dollar cad. Trading, so we'll see if we can get something off here. Uh, I've been buying this medium term for a long time now. I get these data drops on here as well, which is a bit annoying. Okay, so we've got 101.11. While we're waiting, we don't want to miss it. Has anybody got any questions? Any good free news feeds? Uh, let's have a cup of tea. Um, I, I use Trading Forex, uh, uh, Talking Forex, um, but it's not, it, it's a live feed, so, I mean, it's not expensive. Um, I pay 20, I think, £25 a month for that. Um, there is delayed feeds, so if you go to, ID Index used to have it, actually, ID Index used to have the same service, but delayed for, I think it was 60 minutes. No, 60 minutes, 60 seconds. Um, and that service was free. Um, and I think if you go, if you go onto talking for it, I'm sure if you have a look, there's the same that they do give away f away for free. But I um, don't really know. Or ran squawk. I don't know what it is, is the professional arm. Sterling dollar just out of Bollinger Bands on 15 minutes and 50% FIB expansion. Yeah, this is scalping. Um, I've never looked at using it on short time frames. Um, I, oh, sorry, on higher time frames. I'm sure you could. All I try and note is, is where support resistance is in, in, in all time frames and then uh, and then watch price action as it as it evolves. Um, 
got to remember, there's out there, there's all different types of traders. There's, there's obviously scout traders, medium term, long term swing, and they're all looking at, at, at different things. Um, I think if you have got time to be a day trader, uh, you're obviously going to get a hell of a lot more opportunities than somebody that doesn't have time to trade. Um, if you haven't got time to trade, then you know you can still use a signal service provider, which obviously we are. Um, we're FSA regulated, so you have to be uh, completely honest and open in in all, in all of our trades. Uh, and the posting of our profit and loss accounts um, and you know we're not secretive what we have a tendency to do is is we post what we see um, most of our trades uh, that are produced have very decent risk reward uh, which is what you want to be looking at and obviously the day trades can also filter on to medium term trades we, we we post uh, medium term forecasts on a Monday and then intraday forecasts from Tuesday to Friday so people that are um, swing traders or long term traders can still benefit from it because they can still they can still take the uh, the medium term calls um, and you know selling dollar yen was one of those this week You can see the P&L statement. You can't see my personal P&L statement, no. Um, you can see our P&L statement on, the, on our website, which is firstfortrading.com. Anybody got any questions? Because I don't think we're going to get a trigger here. Well, not in the next seven minutes, since these are the three-minute candles. Um, one thing I would say, you can use cable uh, yesterday. I don't just use it for... I also look at extension levels. So if I think there's, there's something that's very relevant... Uh, these are e-signal charts. I think he goes to 50, then it pulls back. Aussie dollar. Um, I think 103.50, and then a pullback to su first support is 103.27, 27, 29 area. Uh, and then it will gyrate around there for the rest of the day. Medium term, I'm looking for a move higher towards... About um, at one of four twenty, I think it was an ABCD correction. What's that doing? What's trying to fall there? Cable. Okay. So yesterday, here we are. We had the two sixty one point eight percent extension level coming in. In fact, that's wrong. Move that off. Okay, so extension tool. When you're using this off higher time frames, do try and just get in, in as close as I can because my eyesight's not as good as it used to be. Try and get it as exact as possible. Okay, and then look to put your your horizontal line on again. Okay, so this was one yesterday. And uh, we took a scalp. So again, going back to larger time frames. So this is 60 minutes. Yes. Um, what basically happens is we've we've got an FSA regulatory officer, um, and we produce our P&L. It then goes to him um, to be authorised. So January is not being done yet. Um, so then we've got this support level around here, and it, again, that's three minutes. I have to draw it back a long way here. But just to show you, how it works. Okay. 
oversold goes into oversold territory produces an inside bar okay, uh, outside Bollinger, inside bar we end up getting a very small dilute and you know the rest is history the market moves to the upside uh, so that was a, a scout from yesterday let's see if we can get anything on cab now I don't think so no so that's basically what I'll be looking for okay if we do get down there probably going to end up with a bit of divergence as well which will be nice at the moment it's a big if Yeah, maybe it's a decent area of pre previous price action. Okay. Um, trouble is, if you if you look to larger time frames, if you look to, to sort of 15 minutes, etc., then you don't get the overbought, oversold situation half as much. Okay. I mean, here you got it engulfing 15 minutes market and overbought markets were traded to the downside, but it wasn't outside the volume yet. Okay, here again, inside it's overbought, you know, 15 minutes that'd be a good, good trigger. But the trouble is that if you're, if you're looking to scalp, you've got to use short time frames and you've got to, you've got to look. Um, to be in and out pretty quick you want to be trading in larger size um, but with with less pit risk um, not a great deal not for um, no I've got nothing on at the moment um, my first unit 6 pips 7 pips 8 pips it depends what the risk was okay, so let's we'll see if I'm taking risk and we said about the risk being uh, the candle top. So if I've got sort of 10 pip risk, then I want I want to be at least near enough 10 pips uh, for my uh, for my first profit target. Okay. We're not going to get anything here. We'll have a quick flick again, but I think it's not the best time of day, really, is it? To uh, to do a live trading session, but this is this is my slot. No. I can tell you what I'm looking at. Somebody's just saying, "Have you got any trades on?" Um, Euro dollar today, we're halfway through the day, so I don't mind you seeing the analysis. Um, bearish bias, we're looking to sell at 97 or a break at 27, it's staying inside that range. Um, cable, we're looking to sell at 10, which I said earlier. The stop at 50, it's not got there. Um, I'm short dollar Swiss at 92.30. Um, short dollar yen, as you well know. Uh, dollar CAD, I was like to buy, looking to buy a dip. I haven't got it. Um, Aussie dollar long at 103.28, looking at 103.50 for the target. Euro sterling, we sold at 86.24, got our first target at 86.04. And then Euro yen, we were actually looking for a push up um, towards 126 to get short. Okay, um, since there's no, anybody got any questions before we call it a day for another week? So the answer was to somebody else last week, and I do hope they came along today. Um, can you scout? Yes, you can. Um, but I wouldn't recommend scalping purely on price action. Okay, I would recommend scalping maybe on the indicators that I've given you. I'd look at price action, I'd look at overbought, oversold, sold in short time frames, and I'd look at support and resistance. Okay. Obviously, you want at least the majority of those factors to line up to give you, uh, to, to give you a decent 
decent edge if you like um, and also you've got to know where your target level is um, where you're going to take your first unit off um, I've not done any market profile for quite a, quite a while this chart package that, that doesn't actually have a market profile on it um, there should be a recorded one in the um, in the archive somewhere ok any questions guys no ok well thanks for coming along um, I hope you enjoyed it um, I hope it's given you a bit more of an insight into uh, short term trading with a long term view is, is, um, is how, how I'd put it um, now you can get in and you don't have to sacrifice sort of 50 pips of your um, of your account for every trade that you take ok thanks very much and like I said if you want to take a trial uh, the website is www.firstfortrading.com and the 4 is the number 4 thank you Vicky ok uh, take care guys and uh, I'll speak to you again soon thanks